So the one thing to get out of all these videos is that this vector is the a result of combining these two basis vectors. Uh, just for review, I'm going to uh, let's use green here. This is our first basis vector, this vector. Okay, and we're taking one of that basis vector, so one times this basis vector, plus, can we use our red, green, let's use black, one of those basis vectors. Oh, not plus sign, plus sign, the plus sign goes right here, so one of these basis vectors. So if I take this vector and I add this vector to it, which would be the same as doing that, oh, that was almost a perfect straight line, did you see that? Oh, that's cool. I, <laughs> I never do that. Anyway, one of these plus one of these gives us the result of this. Now also notice our, our basis vectors. This is orthonormal. Orthogonal is perpendicular. Normal is these are length one. The result vector is not length one though. Okay, if you can imagine if you if one of these basis vectors was a toothpick and we rotated it, it would it would rotate through somewhere around here and then this would be length one, but this is not length one. In fact, to prove that mathematically this is uh, length 1, this is length 1, so that's the square root of 1 squared plus the square root of 1 squared, but 1 squared is 1, so 1 plus 1 is square root of 2, which is not equal to 1. Okay, so I hope you get that idea. Well, I already showed you in the previous video how we can scale. Alright, say I want to extend the x here, I want to scale in the x for our blue resulting vector. Well, that's simple. I can grab this basis vector and, and I can scale it to the right here. Let's go all the way up to 2. Alright, so now we can see the original basis vectors and then we can see how we changed our basis vector to this green vector. So our resulting basis vector is really this right there. And now we're saying, well, give me one of these plus one of these. We'll take this again over here, draw right there. And, ah, there you go our blue resulting vector. And we use that a lot in game. With scale is not an uncommon operation. Maybe we can put a model into the world and scale it, make it larger. Uh, let's bring this down though. I'm going to bring this down to here. Well, a, a, a more common, the, the two most probably common operations we do in game though with matrices is translation, meaning move the model somewhere. Maybe your player's moving or maybe, I don't know, you pick up the companion cube in in the portal game and so you gotta move that model around. Um, so that's translation, but then there's also rotation. If you notice, you throw the companion cube and it'll react to the world and it'll rotate and do various things. So rotation is very common, so is translation. We're not going to cover translation yet. We're going to cover rotation. And before you watch this video, I strongly recommend you watching this one from the Khan Academy. Let me uh, get this off the screen. Here he covers linear transformation examples, rotations in R2, and R2 just meaning two-dimensional. All right, that works roughly the same. Well, pretty much the same in 3D, except there's three basis vectors instead of two. All right, so I'd watch this. He's he's very much, he's much more mathematical than I'm going to be in my example. I'm kind of game mathematical, and he's linear algebra mathematical, and it definitely enhances your education to see both, especially his. Alright, so watch that video. So if I want to rotate this vector, say I want to rotate 45 degrees, which this is, this is 45 degrees right here. If I rotate this vector 45 degrees, then this vector will end up roughly, well it'll end up pretty much dead on with the y-axis here, and I'm going to guess a little bit on its length, it'll be up here. Well, in order to achieve that result, achieve that result, <laughs> I have to rotate this this basis vector 45 degrees as well. So then their basis vector will come out to about here. I'll put theta there because this angle is the same as that angle. And then this basis vector must rotate 45 degrees as well. Okay, so I'm going to rotate the basis vectors and this resulting vector will come with it. Well, how do we how do we do a rotation? Well, 45 degrees, if you remember, is the square root of 2 over 2. I wanted to show you this 
kind of cool trick you can do with Google if you type in a somewhat program programmatic looking function or expression here then Google's smart enough Google's smart enough to say oh you're you're trying to do some calculator and so it'll bring this calculator up for you but it's square root 2 over 2 let me show you another handy reference page I did a simple Google search and found this Germania Community College um, they have this and you, there's you could find this probably in a lot of places but we have this angles and radians and angles and degrees and I said 45 degrees which is really pi over 4 and I like to think of it as pi over 4 it's a nice clean way of thinking it but the sine of that angle is root 2 over 2 and the cosine of that angle is root 2 over 2 so that means we need to uh, basically set all the the components of the basis vectors to root 2 over 2 so I'll watch what happens when I do that I, I'll actually again let me show you I'm not going to get a perfect square root of 2 over 2 because my sliders aren't this granular but we can do 0.7 which will be close enough so it won't be perfect but it'll be pretty good so I'm going to bring our first basis vector I'm going to say well you're going to be 0.7 now and let's bring this up to 0.7 like so and then this basis vector now I can't go this way I want to I want to rotate the other way so I actually have to if I bring you know what before we do this let me bring these to the back to zero here and uh, bring this to zero and I'll bring these back up now again this this goes back to the Khan Academy video but but basically this this angle theta this x component has to be root 2 over 2 for this basis vector and then the y component because we're we'll get a y component of the basis vector I'm going to roughly guess it'll end up right there the y component has to be root 2 over 2 and then the x component though of this basis vector it's going negative you see how this is negative direction so we have to go negative root 2 over 2 but the y component is still it's a terrible y component it's not very perpendicular is it but you get the idea this is still root 2 over 2 so that's why we need we need we must go negative here on this part of the basis vector we we go negative to pull it back but still our our y we're going to bring this down to root 2 over 2 all right let me see if i can get that off the screen okay root 2 over 2 again 0.7 so let's go to 0.7 and 0.7 and negative 0.7 and 0.7 you notice watch those basis vectors you see we've pretty much rotated a good I wonder how good my eyesight was there let's bring this back oh pretty close pretty close so we we've rotated this pi over 2 or or no pi over 4 or 45 degrees and then uh, notice our resulting vector so it's pointing pretty much straight up on the y-axis now it's again it's not perfect because because we don't have a perfect I can't set my sliders to this value I, I'm not that granular but still the idea is nice we just rotated this resulting vector because we were able to rotate the basis vectors you can still see the what we are started out with the original basis vectors here but then here's the results and the length of this is still one the length of this is still one okay we have if I, I can kind of connect the dots a little bit and you can see we sweep out here and then I can sweep out there you see how we're kind of forming a circle so to say but then our resulting vector um, the length of this is the same as the length of what it was right here okay so there you go nice rotation uh, I think I hope that's pretty straightforward and that's pretty neat with one vector but what's more interesting is when we do that with multiple vectors which is why we're interested in this for game because in game we use vectors to make models or three-dimensional models and then all we have to do is rotate all those vectors around to get our model to rotate as well so that's where we're headed I'm going to show you a little bit more of that in the next video.